pilot Al Poindexter now in the white room, recognizing his family before he dons the rest of his gear. He'll be sitting in the right front seat. Recognition not just uh, of the family, but of the Columbus Laboratory aboard Atlantis. This is the European Space Agency's contribution to the International Space Station. Houston, CDR, contact. CDR, Houston, I read you loud and clear. Good morning, Steve. Have you loud and clear also? Good morning, Matt. Rex Walheim being fitted with his helmet. And word that the solid rocket booster retrieval ships Liberty and Freedom are on station, standing by in the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, sir. At this time, we're going to put 674 into work to fuel cell purge. The ships departed from their dock at Hangar AF on Cape Canaveral Air Force Station at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, and they'll be returning to Port Canaveral on Saturday afternoon if weather allows the SRB retrieval operations to begin on schedule after today's launch. Their location is 140 miles northeast of the Cape Canaveral Lighthouse off the coast of Jacksonville. And all stations on 212, no will tow the boosters through the locks to the Banana River, and then turn north for about four miles to the Hangar AF booster disassembly facility. After they arrive back with the boosters, they'll be removed from the water, washed down, and then on Sunday the inspections will begin. Right now they're performing a radar and visual search of the impact area to be sure that it's clear of ships and they're relaying sea conditions and weather reports back to shuttle weather officer Kathy Winters. Ships can cruise at a speed up to 27 knots depending on the weather and can carry enough fuel for a range of 7,000 miles and enough food and water for up to 30 days if need be. The ships have berths for up to 24 crew About an hour before launch, the ships will move to their terminal support point, which is a position about 8 to 10 miles from the predicted point of impact of the boosters. MQC-712. Copy. The solid rocket boosters are burning about 11,000 pounds of propellant every second until they are jettisoned at two minutes into the flight. At that point, they'll be in an altitude of 30 miles but they'll continue upward for about another 70 seconds to an altitude of about 42 miles 
before they begin their free fall back toward the Atlantic Ocean below at a speed of 230 miles an hour. At about three miles in altitude before impact, a drogue chute will deploy to begin slowing the fall to the water. And then about a mile above the ocean, the main chutes deploy, creating a more gradual fall. The total descent to the water takes about seven minutes. And the boosters will impact the ocean at a speed of about 51 miles an hour, usually about seven miles apart. The booster recovery operation takes about six hours. The boosters will be plugged and compressed air will be pumped into the interior, which is a procedure known as dewatering. This will change their configure in the ocean from vertical and bobbing up and down like buoys to a horizontal mode resembling logs in the water. This is actually called the log mode. And in that way they can be towed back to Port Canaveral by the SRB retrieval ships. OVCC 212. Right, OVCC. Hatch is closed and latched for flight, ready for cabin leak check. Okay, copy that. The closeout crew reports that the access hatch is closed and latched and they're ready to do the crew cabin leak checks. Going into the 20-minute built-in hold in 2, 1, T-minus 20 minutes and holding. This is a 10-minute hold. Home CN2 pressurization is in work. Attention all personnel, we're at T-minus 20 minutes and holding. Duration of hold, 10 minutes. DLT, OTC. All personnel, this is the NTD conducting the T-minus 20-minute briefing. Our launch window today opens at 1940. 29 GMT, and that is based on a window open time, and window closes at 195030 GMT. Lock stream back hold time based on our window open is 5 minutes and 00 seconds. We will be looking at our in-plane time and addressing that once we get to T minus 9 minutes. All of those times are based on engine performance, and all of the times will be updated as required. There are no launch window cutouts and no colas today. TLT at T minus 5 minutes, perform APU start upon command of the OTC only. Preparing now to come out of the built-in hold in 10 seconds. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. T minus 20 minutes and counting. ECLOTC. Yes, up 888. Steve Lindsay flying. Shuttle training aircraft reports that the crosswind is fairly steady, which is good for handling characteristics of the shuttle should it have to come back, as opposed to a gusty crosswind, which makes it a bit more sporty. STM, we're going to need tracking for close out crew while they depart. STM copies, 7947. Copy. Remaining before we go into the built in hold at T minus 9 minutes. Closure is in work. Counting now down into the hold in five, four, three, two, one. T minus nine minutes and holding. T minus nine minutes and holding. STM entity. This is a forty minute built in hold. Step ten sixty, let's go 